Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Harry Tunturivuori. Hey, Harry, welcome back. Hi, thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. So, Harry, on Tuesdays, we talk about teams. But before we dive into that, share with us, what was the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Oh, there's uh, many, many good books. Um, but uh, there's one that I, I, I'm uh, thinking of explicitly here. And that, that's, it's a few years in, since I read it. Uh, but that's the book uh, called Scrum Mastery by Geoff Watts. Uh, and uh, I really like it. Uh, yeah, it. It's also it's it's very very many good practical tips uh, and advice uh, if you want to become a good scrum master. Um, and uh, it also it emphasizes the importance of uh, of being a servant leader, uh, which uh, resonates well with me. And uh, it, I also remember I found it a bit funny uh, at times. Uh, and and uh, but I haven't read it in a few years, so I I think I will need to get back to it and read it again because that's a book that I remember that I should read one more time. Absolutely. Uh, when you thought about like when you mentioned that it emphasized the importance of being a servant leader, when you think about that, what were the aspects or some of the aspects from the book that kind of highlighted for you the importance of taking that stance as a leader? Oh, that, that's. Uh... As I said, it's a few years since I read that, so I don't remember the specifics. But I think it's it's fun, funny. I, I have it here, and uh, uh, the part that I, I enjoyed is that it all all the chapters start with uh, something that a good scrum master, for example, a good scrum master will hold the team members to account if needed. A great scrum master will hold the team to account if for not holding the scrum the teammates to account. So they're telling like a good scrum master does this, but a great one does this, and that's even better. And that's something that it makes it fun for for me at least. It was uh, really fun to read. Absolutely, and uh, uh, of course, uh, Jeff Watts has been a guest on the podcast. I'll link to his episode so that people can go and listen to him. Also, talk about Scrum Mastery, the book, uh, but definitely a great book and a, a great recommendation. So, Harry, mm -hmm. now we turn our attention to the teams. Now, the teams are, of course, a big focus for our work as Scrum Masters, working with teams directly. Mm -hmm. But we also know that sometimes teams, you know, they, they have their own life and they develop their own behaviors and patterns that ultimately may lead to trouble. So let's explore one of those stories, Harry. Tell us a story of a team you work with. Uh, give us a little bit of the context, but then walk us through the steps, how those behavior started from little small things that you started observing and then grew and grew and became a problem. Share that story with us, Harry. Yeah, so uh, the the situation I have in mind, it's, uh, it's uh, already many years ago. Um, I was in a situation uh, where um, I was working with a team um, where they had a new, got a new manager uh, and this manager was uh, promoted from within the team itself. And uh, and uh, the manager, he was very high skilled, a very high performing team member. Uh, so he, he got, uh, and that's the reason he got promoted, I suppose. Uh, he was really had strong technical skills. And, uh, but not as good leadership skills. Uh, and, and uh, when he got the management role, he he couldn't let go. So he he, he couldn't my... let go of his technical skills, I imagine. Yes. So he he was micromanaging the team and so on. Um, and uh, how how he, did that he... micromanagement show? Like, what were the the things that he did that, in your mind, were micromanagement for the team? Well, it, it was uh, as he, he was very technically very good. So, so uh, 
he knew uh, the way of doing all the tasks. Uh, he, he could uh, step in. Basically, if somebody would be away, he could go in and do, at least in the beginning, jump in and do his, his work. And uh, so he would come with, uh, maybe he thought of them as suggestions uh, to the team members to, to do how to do a certain task, but it came out more as, a, as an order. Do it like this. This is how you do it. And, and very fast, uh, without the team members themselves getting the time to to think about the task uh, beforehand, and and so and oftentimes he wrote also in the in the stories that oh this is how we we'll solve it. Uh, so when the product owner had written like uh, as a user I want this and that, and then he was okay so this is how we do it, and then uh, the, the the developers became more like. Uh, yeah, just implementing the solution that works. code monkeys, I think, is the poetic yes. term we used to use back then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that was the word I was I was gonna say, but I didn't know if it was uh, if that's okay to say. So. I I have felt like a code monkey myself. I can totally yeah. relate to that, but of course, it's not a very healthy or productive way for team members to feel uh, because yeah. then they disengage, right? And I imagine that's probably one of the things that happen in that team. Yes, exactly. So, so uh, well, of course, the team members, they, yeah, I don't know. They, it, it became also that they were becoming more like working in silos. Uh, so, so that, and for me, uh, I, I felt uh, quite, I don't know, helpless in that situation. Maybe I shouldn't feel helpless, but it was like, he, he was the manager and he was very tough and, and so on. And, uh, I tried to talk to him. He didn't uh, listen. He's like, "This is the best way," and and why shouldn't I tell and all these things? So it was, it was a, a difficult time uh, for, for well, both What me happened and the to team. that team? Like, did that manager stay in the team for a long time? Yes, did... yes, that manager stayed uh, with the team. Uh, there was uh, several people. Uh, some some uh, quit the jobs. Uh, so others just became uh, demotivated. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah so it, it so was, uh, when you think about it, it, that story and if you think about the perspective of a scrum master let's say look out there probably working with exactly a similar situation with a micromanaging technical background manager trying to direct the team in all kinds of details what advice do you have to share with luke uh, what do you think someone in that situation should do that you didn't do back then I think that they should sit down, take book a meeting with the manager uh, to sit down with them and and uh, try to explain what effects this has on the team. Because I, I, I try to just put it in, go talk to him when when he was busy, and uh, so I think what I should have done is to to. Uh, book a time uh, and think it through myself first and how to put this in a way that that uh, that he would understand uh, and also at the same time yeah not be aggressive just and, and try to understand why they do that and yeah try to help them and explain what it what effect it has on the team and of course people listening to this episode can actually take this episode and listen it together with the manager uh, because this is a real story that Harry has has just shared with us um so when we prepare that conversation it's not necessarily going to be an easy conversation so what do you think what are the things we should think about in preparing that conversation with the manager what would you kind of list or what would you tackle in that conversation with the manager yeah, it it uh, depends uh, on uh, on the situation, of course. But in this situation, um, I think first I would maybe talk with the team members uh, one by one to get uh, how they feel, and and then uh, come with uh, facts uh, and and uh, yeah, I think that that's that's the. One thing, and then uh, prepare to explain how this what kind of effect this can have on a team, and and uh, uh, maybe put it in in the way that that he's he's uh, making them. How would you say? 
disengaged and uh, um, yeah, because nobody wants to just implement somebody else's solution. So also not the manager either, right? Like no, <laughs> because he he got to be so uh, talented and so skillful because he had to learn, right? And, yeah. and how you get better is that you learn. If if you are always being told exactly what to do and how to do it, you will not learn, and therefore you will not become better at the job that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Uh, and when yeah. when when you think about this, uh, uh, because of course it's not necessarily an easy conversation. When you think about the conversation with the team members, like you said, okay, I would talk to the team members, maybe collect some facts and understand how they feel. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you think us as Scrum Masters should be ready for? Well, like what should we be looking for when it comes to understanding better the point of view of the team members? Yeah, it's, uh, you never know how, how uh, people react on things. So uh, I would uh, be prepared on, on anything basically, but just uh, for me, it's like the listening is is the part here uh could start as easy as just asking uh, so how, how do you feel and uh, how do you feel about the work you're doing and uh, and so on and then listen to what they say and i think it's it's much just um, just that listening and and uh, letting them tell their story Absolutely. Letting them tell their story. And uh, we are there to ask the questions, uh, as, as Harry said, uh, which I think is very well put. Be ready for anything because we don't really know anybody or everybody will react to this situation differently. Yeah. Thank you for the story, Harry. That was wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.